Professor Anani Atta is a physics professor at the University of Memphis. He has a PhD from Penn State University, which is another affiliate one, in solid state physics. He pioneered the use of planetarium software in exploring the sky, described his native text, and has made a number of uh, contributions to the study of astronomy in India. One of his major contributions is the lecture that we are going to hear today about uh, determining the date of the Mahabharata war. So he is going, I'm not going to talk about it because I'm lame, I don't know anything about it. But I'm just, just, just like me, you are all also interested to know the date because scientifically he has proven that this is where the exact date. People say, you know, Mahabharata did happen, Ramayana did happen, it's all myth and, you know, just uh, Purana and all those things. That's why we need professors like uh, Dr. Acha to prove that it's not a myth, it is a history, it happened, and uh, he can give us the date exactly when it happened. Uh, there's a little story of how I got into this. Uh, as uh, Shastri mentioned, I'm a solid state physicist. Can you hear me now? Uh, it so happened that uh, my colleague, Professor Bulek, who was teaching astronomy, he suddenly passed away. And somebody had to take over his astronomy classes, and I sort of volunteered to do that. I didn't have much background in astronomy, and uh, that was a summer session. So, and we have to teach about two hours every day. So I had to learn and then go and teach my students. I never let my students know that I was barely one step ahead of them. <laughs> and I don't know, even to this day, who had the most difficult part, me or my students, or perhaps both. Uh, anyway, uh, that was a, that's a course for astronomy for non-science majors. And uh, history of astronomy is one of the integral topics that's in the course. So they talked about uh, Greek astronomy and a little bit about Chinese astronomy and Babylonian astronomy. And there was no mention of Indian astronomy, ancient Indian astronomy. I said, that's strange. Because I know that for a fact that India has had a long tradition of astronomy. So then I looked for, see if there are any other texts that describe it. I looked through for about 24 texts. Only two of them mentioned India, and both were wrong. And I said, no, this has to change. So and then I looked for uh, sources, and then I tried to build a background of Indian astronomy for myself. At about this time, which was in the mid 1990s, uh, personal computers were becoming very powerful, and uh, a software program called the Planetarium Software became commercially available. These programs have been traditionally used uh, in observatories for automatic observations for telescopes, because these programs can project the view of the sky at any time and at any place. And so if you want to observe a certain object in the sky, and you can verify whether it will be visible on a particular time, and so you can actually program the telescope to do that. So those things became commercially available. And then I thought, maybe you could use this software to look at the dates of Indian text, because we do have a lot of information, but a sample information in text. And so we can project it and see on which day these events would have occurred. And so that would give an idea of the time of those texts. So one of the first things I had to do was to identify the stars that we see in the software with the traditional nakshatra that we use. See, our sense of time is based on three fundamental motions. One is the rotation of the Earth on its axis, that gives us the day. The revolution of the moon around the Earth, that gives us the month. And the revolution of the Earth around the sun, that gives us the year. In our traditional Jyotisha, we describe this event in terms of uh, 
observation of the paths of the sun and the moon. As the earth goes around the sun, the sun appears to go around the earth as observed in the earth. The moon up appears to go around the earth. So their paths in the sky are described. In fact, the sun's path is called a Kulte or Bhachakra. And that is nothing but the projection of the Earth's orbit into the celestial sphere. <coughs> Since the sun goes around the Earth as seen from the Earth, it completes its circle once a year. So he moves approximately one degree per day along the ecliptic. The moon completes the same circle in 27.3 days. So the moon covers the same about 13 degrees and 20 minutes every day. So the moon is ahead of the sun by about 12 degrees. The position of the moon it can be located by observing certain bright stars along the equator, and our ancient rishis have identified 27 such stars, and those are called the nakshatra, Ashwini, Harini, Krishna, Rohi, etc. And so the first thing for me to also identify these with the names in the modern star network. There have been identifications, but uh, those are uh, unsatisfactory. So I did that, uh, let me not go into that. Anyway, have that. So the position of the moon is that indicates nakshatra. The nakshatra of the day, for example, when you perform a puja, you tell your nakshatra. The nakshatra simply indicates where the moon was at the time of the day uh, you were born. And then a difference of 12 degrees between the sun and the moon is called Tithi. So if you know Nakshatra and Tithi, that automatically fixes the position of the sun and the moon. And uh, from that we can get a lot of other things. Anyway, so that's the basis. So in the Mahabharata, uh, Uh, then, uh, it was suggested by Dr. Kalyan Brahman, uh, why don't you use this approach to date the Mahabharata? And so that's how I got into uh, this, uh, looking at the date of the Mahabharata. At that time, I was very naive, and I thought, oh, I could finish it in three or four months. Boy, was I wrong. The importance of the Mahabharata war is that it is central to landmark in Indian traditional history and fixing the date of the Mahabharata war uh, since the events occurring uh, both before and after that. That's uh, a statement made by Dr. Kula Pusoka. Uh, so the question is when did the Mahabharata war take place? And so this is the outline of the talks. And uh, we have already seen that. We saw that, that the date is uniquely determined at 367 BC, and this is based on astronomical data purely from within the Earth. And we're using planetary software, and it is independent of any other source. Well, this has progressed over several years, so I started this in 2000, and uh, I've been able to present that. And they actually developed over uh, in three stages. And uh, I have presented a talk at about each of these uh, states. Uh, first was in Montreal in 2001, and the second one was in the uh, Rage Conference in 2002, and the third one was a conference in Bangalore in 2003, and the fourth one was a conference of 